Okay, next for introductions, I have Brittany. Are you here, Brittany? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Hello, can you introduce yourself? Um, yeah, my name is Brittany Zemlik. I am an adjunct instructor at Grossmont College, and I created um, an online textbook for intermediate level students. I work with English language students. Um, and so my textbook is uh, based around videos. It's speaking and listening. So students um, watch videos and then use that as a model to um, do projects. So um, I also use H5P and um, some of the other uh, functions in LibreText to create the textbook. So that's me. Great, thanks. thanks. So that's it. Great, thanks. Brittany, you wanna go next? Yeah, so um, how I got involved in OER um, actually has a lot to do with AB705. Um, if you guys are familiar with that, it had a big impact on the community colleges and English language um, programs. And um, basically at Grossmont, we had to just kind of revamp our whole curriculum um, and we're looking to make it more, um, uh, more integrated skills and topic-based curriculum. Um, and, and we also had to uh, contract our program. We had to squash it into five levels when it was previously seven. Um, so I started making materials for an immediate level course, um, not this past summer, but the summer before, just as part of um, Grossmont Community College um, so that we would have free materials and because our students um, being English language learners uh, and immigrants, they really struggle with high textbook costs. It can be um, really, really hard for them. So um, we're trying to go completely textbook free. Um, and so I worked on that um, about a little over a year ago and there was a supplementary course that goes with the main intermediate level course that I was teaching, um, which was a pronunciation class. And um, kind of like what Christina was saying, we kind of ran out of funding, ran out of time. And so we didn't have, uh, we were still using this um, textbook called uh, Well Said, which, um, you know, it, it's okay, but I wasn't a huge fan of, and I had some ideas of uh, things that I wanted to do with it. And my, um, a uh, department chair actually got in touch with um, LibreText and she had a sabbatical and created some materials for them. Um, and so she told me about LibreText and uh, because she knew that I had this course book that I wanted to make um, for OER materials that would be free for the students um, and also uh, topic-based and integrated skills. Um, and so I had, um, I taught this class, this um, ESL uh, intermediate level course uh, for pronunciation for two semesters. And uh, then I finally managed to get in touch with LibreText. And um, so they gave me the opportunity to um, create a textbook over the, the summer. Um, unfortunately, I then lost my class um, because of numbers going down. So, um, but other teachers are using my textbook, which is good. Um, and so it is, um, it, it's sort of, it's integrated skills. It's meant to support, um, it's focused on speaking and listening and pronunciation. It's meant to support another core intermediate level course, which is also integrated skills. Um, and yeah, our college has been kind of moving towards um, OER, trying to reduce textbook costs, trying to make um, education more accessible to students. Um, you know, the longer that I'm in the field, the more I come into contact with students who are just like, I can't, <laughs> they, they're struggling to make ends meet. So trying to pay for uh, this well said textbook, which had um, you know, there was the print copy, but then there was also um, the, an online, like, um, interactive called my ELT that went with it that was really, really helpful, but, like, the whole thing was something like $70, and they're like, oh, I can't do it. Um, so I was happy to uh, be able to move towards this online platform, um, and I use H5P as well. 
Um, I really like the interactive component of it. And, um, you know, I, I kind of look at it as um, practice for students and then say, okay, you know, when you take the test on Canvas or whatever, it's going to be similar to these questions. So it, it does motivate them to use the practice activities, even if I can't keep track of whether they got it right or not. And, um, and it gives them automatic feedback of whether they got it right too. So that's really helpful. That's me. Thanks, Brittany. Can you clarify, um, and I admit I should know this because we're in the same state, uh, the, uh, the bill that you mentioned, can you clarify what that, what that laid out? AB705, oh gosh, I am not an expert on this. Um, and I know there's at least one other ESL teacher in there. Um, AB705 um, isn't just about English language teachers. It is about um, community colleges. It mostly affects English and math and ESL is kind of lumped in with English, even though it's different. Um, and it's been a while since I talked about this. So basically, um, the goal of AB705 is to make education more accessible and to reduce the amount of time that students have to spend in college, bef specifically reduce the amount of time it takes them to get to um, transfer level credits. So by transfer level, if they're at the community college um, and they're taking classes, um, if they're just taking remedial classes, um, those credits don't count towards a degree. They don't even count towards general education. So um, they're trying to get students to start taking transfer level classes earlier so that they can reduce the amount of time that they're actually spending in college and increase the chances of them graduating because um, over a long period of time, um, you know, a lot of students, it was taking them seven years just to get a college degree. And you, know, you lost a huge percentage of, of students because they ran out of resources. It was taking too long, you know, for whatever reason. So part of it is um, there aren't any more entrance level tests. There's no more reading or math tests. Um, there's no more level tests. It's um, self-guided placement now. So, um, and it's also based on like high school grades, what classes you get into. So there are a few support classes, but um, they're just trying to get the majority of students into transfer level uh, general education classes right, right when they get into college. Um, and part of how that affected ESL was with um, trying to make it, uh, there was research that said that topic-based integrated skills lessons were more effective than um, say having a grammar class and a pronunciation class and a reading class. So trying to get them all in together. Um, and also um, we were affected because we were given a limit on how many levels of ESL we could have. Um, so does that answer your question? answers my question. Um. Okay. Um, I just wanted to take a second to point out like where to find things on here. I, if you're going to humanities, um, this wasn't super clear to me when I first went into it, but if you go to humanities and then books and then languages, this is both ESL and, um, and world languages. And um, English is a foreign language. And then um, you can find my book here at the bottom. This is um, speaking pronunciation projects for uh, English language learners. It's not a terribly creative title, but um, there you go. Um, and so my textbook um, basically has four units and each unit um, is based on a theme and it's a three, it's for a three credit course. So um, it's each unit is based around basically one model video. And uh, so if I click on the first unit, which is people and places, um, and then the first section, um, the way that um, the course works is basically you start with 
um, a discussion uh, to get students interested in the topic and then um, some vocabulary work. Um, and then they watch a video. Um, it looks like actually I might need to fix that link. Um, and then there is a little bit more work on vocabulary here. Um, and so basically listening for gist, um, listening for main idea activities, listening for um, specific details. And then um, there's an H5P activity here that students can self-check. Um, and then after students watch the video, um, there's discussion here. So um, this is all just based on students um, having a clear uh, comprehension of the video, which it happens to be a, um, 25 things to do in Berlin. It's about um, sort of like a travel guide and I use about the first three minutes of this. Um, and then if I go back, um, this was made specifically for a pronunciation class. Um, so there's a little bit of vocabulary review and then uh, each unit has some specific pronunciation features. And then the main focus of the unit um, is in the first part, which is understanding the video for students who are intermediate level. So um, there's a lot of listening, a lot of vocabulary they need to work on. And then um, the idea is for them to actually produce a similar video. So the model video is of um, a, giving like a little walking tour of Berlin and then um, students can actually create their own walking tour of a, a place that they know well. Um, so these are the project instructions. Um, there's a rubric. I made a sample um, project that students can use. There's some language work here um, and then there's a discussion so students actually share their work with each other so that they have a reason to create it in the first place. Um, so that is the main gist of it. Um, I would say one of um, the most challenging things about creating this course book was um, sort of dealing with accessibility and making sure that, um, you know, I, I wanted to do cool things, um, but also needed to make sure that it was readable. Um, so having to make sure that I um, have uh, descriptions for each of the pictures, um, some of the layout for the activities um, had to be in this sort of table format so that it can be read from left to right. Um, and yeah, and it, it also kind of limited the H5P use. Um, but yeah, also, um, I would say if I was going to use this in my class, um, I would probably, if it was a face-to-face -face class, I would probably actually um, get it ready for print and, and take it, have students actually take it in class with them. So printing maybe, you know, 10 or 12 bucks, something really reasonable for the whole book. Um, and then uh, they could do some of the practice activities and the H5P activities at home for homework. So um, that's the, the gist of it. Thanks, Brittany. Have you gotten any feedback from the um, faculty that are using it? I know you said you haven't had a chance to use it yet. Yeah, so um, mostly so far, it's just been people who have noticed that like typos and stuff, um, which I'm just sort of outsourcing my editing that way, uh, which is actually pretty helpful. Um, I haven't had a chance to check in with them and see what parts of the textbook they've used and which ones they haven't. Um, I, I know some um, asked me how to uh, integrate the course book in Canvas. Um, and so I gave them the instructions on how to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I do actually need to check in with them. There's quite a few sections of this class at Grossmont um, and they were all excited about it when I told them about it at the beginning of the semester. Um, but it was like, I finished it, um, you know, kind of, mid-August, maybe a week or two before the semester started. So some people actually had to change 
pretty quickly, which I was surprised that they did that, mm -hmm. um, changing from the paid textbook to this. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll check in with them and let you know what they say. Great, thanks.